Ever since Bed Wars was released into the prototype lobby back in January 2017, players have been striving for new strategies to gain an edge over their opponents. Whether it's introducing new bridging styles, rushing techniques, or even bed defenses, it's safe to say that the meta of Bed Wars shifts over time, along with every other game ever. So as the average Bed Wars player gets progressively better over time, a lot of players fall into a limbo state, where they don't necessarily improve or worsen their gameplay. For most players, this is completely fine, but if you're like me and want to utterly dominate and demolish your opposition, then you have come to the right place. Or perhaps you're already a god at the game and want to achieve a higher state of existence, then you've also come to the right place. Because today, I present to you 5 tips for you to get better at Bed Wars. The first tip is probably one of the most valuable tips I can give to any player at any level, and that is do not spend all of your time learning an impossible bridging technique. Okay, obviously if you knew a bridging style was impossible, you wouldn't waste your time on it anyway. But what I mean is stop spending hours and hours giving yourself carpet tunnel attempting to learn some incredibly difficult bridging styles such as god bridging or moonwalking. Wait, what the hell? I actually did it? Okay, that's not supposed to be part of the video. It is not worth it. These bridging styles are only effective and consistent if you know how to drag click well and have impeccable and precise timing all the time. But look, Cape, I can do it with 3 CPS normal click. I don't want to hear it, okay? Also, take note of how many times your favorite god bridger falls into the void over the course of several games. Is that what you want to do? Negatory, amigo. A slow speed bridger will be more efficient in their gameplay by not falling at all than having a god bridger going zoom zoom for a couple of blocks only to fall in the void and wait an eternity to respawn at their base with no materials. Now I know, I know, I am guilty of attempting some fast and risky bridging techniques for videos and I do fall in the void a lot, however, when I am playing casually or on my own, I am just going at a consistent pace that prevents me from falling. So instead of beating yourself up because you cannot god bridge as well as bedless noob, learn how to speed bridge and find a rhythm that works for you. The second tip that I can give you guys is one that is typically overlooked a lot and that is diamond management and when to obtain. Them. Most players will typically run to get diamonds after they've completed their first rush, which is generally a good rule of thumb to have, but don't be afraid to pull a sneaky and get them whenever you have a chance. Now it doesn't really matter when you get diamonds, but ensure you are getting diamonds because you do not want to be the guy at the end of the game who has no protection, no sharpness, and no women. Because guess what, while you were falling into the void from attempting your speedy man bridge, homie on the other side of the map was stacking up to the point where he's literally now Jesus, and has sharpened swords along with 4 levels of protection. That would not be very pogchamp now would it? So what did you purchase first when you get your diamonds in the early game? Let me tell you. If you have one diamond, get mining fatigue. If you have two diamonds, get protection or get mining fatigue and stash the other diamond in your chest. The choice is really yours as it comes down to preference. Personally, I would get protection first if I had the choice between the two. If you have three diamonds, get protection and mining fatigue. Lastly, if you have four diamonds, get protection, mining fatigue, and save the other one. If you obtained more than four diamonds, then I recommend saving the other ones for sharpness only after you've bought protection. And mining fatigue, of course. If you guys don't know by now, mining fatigue is kind of important. A common misconception is to buy sharpness first when given the chance to do so. Don't do that. Protection and mining fatigue is a superior option as it literally shields you from hits and intruders. But don't get me wrong, after you purchase protection and you have the funds to buy sharpness, go for it. After all, pointy swords equals ouchie. So after using all of your brain power to determine whether or not to spend your hard-earned diamonds on those three options, you are free to get whatever you want after that. Or so you thought. You are forever stuck in the infinite loop of buying protection for the rest of your life as there are four levels to it. You must sell and dedicate your life to the protection gods. You want to purchase something else? Not allowed. You are Bedworth's slave. You have no authority here. Okay, I might have gone off on a tangent there. My bad. This next tip has a primary focus on the doubles slash team based game modes, but it can also be applied to souls as well. What I'm talking about, of course, is hesitation and quick decision making. How many times have you miscalculated and jumped into the void in an attempt to defend your bed only to find out that you're too late? Or how many times has your teammate told you to void to defend against an attacker and when you finally do, your bed gets destroyed and you take a final death? The answer is probably yes. Too many times I find myself and my teammates hesitating too much when it comes to making the big brain move of voiding to respawn at your island. You must make it a priority to analyze the situation at hand and make an executive decision to void or not to void. Once you have decided, communicate that with your teammate, if you have any, and communicate it with confidence. If you are told to void, do just that. If you are caught in a situation where you and your teammate are not close to base, make the choice to void or chase. Oh, that rhymes, that's kinda cool. Proper communication is essential to win in Bed Wars, and determining whether or not voiding is crucial to defend and prosper, it's ultimately up to you. Therefore, the biggest obstacle when putting this decision making skill to the test is yourself. And if you have teammates, establishing chemistry with them is very important as well. Also, don't play with people you don't like. It may seem like a no brainer, but if you're valuing a teammate's skill over chemistry, then you're doing it all wrong. Chances are they will hesitate or even worse, not listen to you when asked to void. And vice versa. Well, okay, but what if I don't like myself as a teammate? Should I just not play Bed Wars? The answer to that question is yes. I I mean no. Love yourself.
This next tip is going to be divided into three little tips because I said so. When you're on a slow iron map and already know that you're going to place wool as your bed defense, place the wool as soon as you get four iron. This makes your rush slightly faster as you're not placing your bed defense after you've obtained all the required blocks. Whenever you get two emeralds, spend it on jump and speed rather than invis. For some reason, everyone and their grandmother can notice invisible players these days like there's no tomorrow. So better to just stay visible and have some overpowered jump and speed boosts. But don't get me wrong, buying an invis potion is very useful. Just be smart about it. Determine whether or not you'll be more successful in your rush with invis or jump plus speed. Once again, utilizing that ultra instinct decision making skill as mentioned earlier. But well, obviously, if you have more than two emeralds, you can do whatever you want. I, I don't even care, man. <laughs> it's, uh, whatever. It's, it's fine. I, I literally don't care what you do with the emeralds, okay? Look in the chat to see who is a threat in your game of Bed Wars. If you see someone breaking a bed at the speed of light, then you should probably make a priority to target them after you've completed your first rush. I repeat, after you've completed your first rush. Unless this good player you took note of is your first rush, do not cross map someone right off the bat. Don't do that. Come on. Speaking of maps and crossing them, that brings me to my last tip. Analyze and take advantage of maps and what they have to offer. What I mean by this is take faster routes from running from island to island. How many of you have ran around a track or football field of some sort? If you know what I'm getting at, then you know the closer you are to the inside of the track, or better as map in this case, the shorter distance you will have to cover. For example, if you're on speedway and need to get across the island with a diamond generator on it, then take the shortest possible route by hugging the edge to cover less distance. Along with taking shorter routes when moving, take note of what the maps have to offer and ask yourself these questions. How can take less fall damage? Or how does this map allow me to knock my opponents off the edge more easily? Take a look at Airshow for example. Whenever I do my rush, I always go a decent height up on my bridge and then jump and place a block on the cables that attach to the balloon. This allows me to take a little to no fall damage when making my descent. Also in Airshow, whenever I take a fight on the air balloons, doing a simple little block placement and hitting my opponents off the small platform is an easy way to take them out. Little things like that to take note of can turn you from a good player to an even better player. Well, hopefully I did not cram your brain with all this information I provided, but it should be known that getting better at better worse takes time, as does any other game. I'm just here today to speed that process up a little bit. Thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like, comment if you want, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.